So quadratic functions, basically we are going to study the three different quadratic function forms because remember that a quadratic equation or a function can be written in various forms. So we are quickly going to study because every different form of the quadratic function provides some information readily. That means some forms are more uh, friendly to algebraic. That means you can use it for solving in algebraic way. Some may be very good for plotting equations or visualizing the quadratic function. So different forms provide this one and therefore it will be helpful to actually compare the, the various forms and actually understand that each form has its own importance and knowing these forms is very important because they have certain properties that may be useful for solving problems. So let us try to write the different forms. So one is called the standard form. That means in a standard form what the equation looks like is the function, the quadratic function looks like ax square plus bx plus c. So let us write that as the standard form is the ax square plus bx plus c that we all know about. The second way is like factor form. That means in a factor form, we express the quadratic function as the product of two factors, which means that the equation will be typically written as x minus, if I think p and q are the roots or the factors, then it will be called x minus p into x minus q. So this is sometimes some equations are given in this form for you to solve some problems. So it may be uh, worthwhile to actually understand what information this equation provides. Similarly, there is a vertex form. A vertex form of a quadratic equation is written in this fashion like y equal to a into x minus h square plus k. We will go over all of these forms separately. But let us try to actually understand each form first. So I will try to compare each form of the quadratic function using various attributes and then see what all information we can readily provide and what it cannot because we are not actually going to convert these forms into one another and then find out because that will be a too much effort. We just want to know what it can provide without having to do anything to this equation. So let us take an example for solving this one. So I will take an example of the quadratic function say y equal to x square minus 7x plus 12. So in this form, let us try to see what all things we can do. So one thing we want to see is opens. That means we want to see whether the parabola opens up or down. So in this case, the coefficient of x square is very known to us. It is 1, positive. Therefore, it opens up. So let me write it like this. That means it looks like this. The parabola opens up. Similarly, we want to find out if we know the roots. Roots is not possible to tell without actually doing some operations. So we will say we don't know the roots in this standard form. It is not easy to quickly see with eyes the roots. So we cannot say that. So let us talk about the sum of roots. The sum of roots is possible because the coefficient of x divided by, so it is minus b by a. So it is 7. Sum is 7. So we actually know that once somebody gives me in a standard form, I should be able to tell that the sum of the roots is 7. Similarly, product of the roots is also known easily. We can see that the product of the roots is 12 by 1, which is 12. So in this form, it is very easy to know the sum and the product, but not the roots themselves. Similarly, we wanted to know whether the discriminant, discriminant is what? Because it tells us something else. So a discriminant means it is a b square minus 4ac. So looking at this one, we can we have to calculate, but still it is not that hard. So we can see that b square is 49 minus 48, 1. So discriminant is greater than 0. So we know by that the roots are real. So we actually know that the roots are real, or we can say two real roots. So it is possible to quickly calculate the discriminant and then say that it is two real roots. So in a standard form, it is possible to uh, derive that. Similarly, let me understand about the y-intercept. So this actually helps you visualize the graph. So y-intercept is the c, constant c. So it is 12. So I know the y-intercept easily. So that means there are a lot of information that is available 
uh, from a standard form let us further write more so let us try to even compare uh, certain things like do we know axis of symmetry so we don't know axis of symmetry very easily without doing some calculation so i'm going to say we don't know about it what about the vertex the vertex is also not possible to know just by looking at it we cannot do it we have to do some manipulations similarly uh, what about minimum and maximum that means do we know what is the minimum and maximum value for y we are not interested in the x values because we know that x always goes from minus infinity to plus infinity so we are going to just use the y values and this we don't know because it is not possible to do without some manipulations and then finally we will say whether we can draw this graphically easily that means can we draw this by looking at this equation graphical graphical version so let us leave it like that and then say this is um, we can do little bit but not too much so what we are going to do is we can draw as much as we know so we know that if i have um, a function like this we know it opens upward that means we the intersection will be at y equal to 12 and we know it opens up maybe something like this maybe something like this but we don't know the actual roots so anything beyond this is not possible to do or find out from a standard form so once we summarize the standard form you know we know it opens up it is easy to find out roots we don't know but the sum and the product of the roots is possible to tell we also can quickly tell whether it has real or imaginary roots we also know the y-intercept but we don't know anything else after that so um, let us try to now see what a factor form can do so the factor form so here we are assuming that somebody has already given this form we are not trying to convert this one so a factor form is given to you and somebody says okay i give you this factor form like this can you tell me all the information that you can tell quickly without actually doing any manipulations so that's exactly what we're trying to do here so in this case we also know it opens up the reason is because the product of x square is a coefficient the coefficient of a is a product of the x square terms x terms so x square is one coefficient is one therefore it opens up positive so we can quickly say yes we know by looking at the factor form whether it opens up or not the roots yes we know because the roots are four and three remember that when i set y equal to zero we get x equal to four and x equal to three so that means we know the roots readily in this case some of the roots we know because by adding these roots we will do it's not that we know the coefficient but at least we can add these two roots and we know that the root some of the roots is known to us the product of the roots also known to us because once the roots themselves are known it is actually very easy to know the sum and the product the discriminant should be greater than zero we don't have to worry about finding the discriminant itself we know that it is two real roots by the fact that we already know the roots themselves so these are all easy because once the roots are known so a factor form is actually very useful because all of this information is readily available without much problem therefore the product the y-intercept is the product of the roots or we can even multiply 4 and 3 and say that the y-intercept is 12 therefore we even know the y-intercept axis of symmetry can be found out the reason is because uh, it is the midpoint of 3 and 4 that means axis of symmetry is always every quadratic equation is symmetric around the y-axis and we know that 3 and 4 are the roots therefore the symmetry will be 3.5 that means x equal to 3.5 is the symmetry that means if i have some quadratic equation like this the axis of symmetry has to be the line that passes through the midpoint of any two points on the either side so if 3 and 4 are the roots where it intersects 3.5 will be the middle point and therefore x equal to 3.5 so we know the axis of symmetry in a factor form just by looking at it vertex is not possible to, to know because we only know the um, we only know the h coordinate of the vertex but not the k co the y coordinate therefore we will say we don't know similarly we don't know the min and max that means we don't know what is the minimum and maximum value for y for this one without doing much and let us try to see how much we can plot for a um, for a quadratic function in a factor form so i would say i know point x equal to 3 and x equal to 4 is where it intersects the axis and the y intercept is 12 so i can pretty much do a lot of things because if you think about it i actually know three points of the uh, of the parabola because we know three x equal to three y is equal to zero x is equal to four y equal to zero and x is equal to zero y is equal to 12 this is the intercept and these are the two roots so we actually know three points of a parabola therefore we can quickly draw the parabola itself using a factor form so a factor form is 
very powerful in the sense that you know we are able to know a lot of information from the quadratic function without actually solving or doing anything much so let us try to do the uh, vertex form and see what we can get a vertex form for this equation would be let's change the ink here so we know that the vertex form will be for this would be x minus now um, so we have to assume that somebody has given us the vertex form and if somebody asks if this is the vertex form what is the information that we can provide to him readily so this is going to be minus 1 by 4 so this is the quadrat vertex form for this example that we have taken so we know that it opens up because by looking at it we know that the coefficient of x square will be 1 and therefore it opens up so we know that we can do that roots themselves are not readily available but still we can solve it because we know that if i set it to zero the roots will be what seven by two so let us actually try to say that with a slight manipulation we will be knowing so that means seven by two plus one by two seven by two minus one by two the way i found these roots is I know that when I set it equal to 0, 1 by 4 will go to the right side and therefore the square root of 1 by 4 will be half. So I know that the roots will be 7 by 2 plus 1 by 2 and 7 by 2 minus 1 by 2. So that means the vertex form does give us the roots with a little bit of an effort but that is not bad because we can easily do it. That means the sum of the roots therefore will be, first write the roots themselves. The, the, the roots will be 4 and 3 by virtue of these two that we expressions we found out. So now we can write the sum of the roots is 7, the product of the root is 12 because we know 4 plus 3. The discriminant is also greater than 0 and we know about it. The two real roots, we can say that. So the vertex form is capable of providing a lot of information the factor form gives and a little bit more because we also know the roots in a vertex form. Now the y-intercept will be 12 because we can, since we know the roots themselves, we are able to tell about the y-intercept. The axis of symmetry is half it, at least axis of symmetry is readily available because h x is equal to h is called the axis of symmetry so in this case it is 3.5 so we actually know the axis of symmetry is 3.5 then let us scroll this little bit upward so we have more space the vertex itself the uh, vertex itself is called the h and k so if h and k is the vertex the vertex is 3.5 and minus 1 by 4 so we actually know where the vertex point is and what about min and max so we'll come to min and max first let us draw the graph itself for a vertex form that means a vertex form is actually most powerful form of the quadratic equation because it pretty much tells everything because even i can do the vertex point is completely known to me and this is x is 3.5 y is minus 1 by 4 so we know the vertex form we actually know the roots themselves which is 3 let's try to squeeze in our so that we are able to compare 3 and 4 is the roots the intercept is 12 so x is 0 and y is 12 so we we know actually four points easily so that means i can actually draw my quadratic pretty accurately i know my y intercept is 12 i know my root is at 3 and 4 and i know the axis of symmetry is 3.4 and then we actually know the minimum and maximum because remember the y coordinate k tells me that the minima for this function is the minimum value is minus 1 by 4 so we can actually write yes we know and it is equal to minus 1 by 4 so what we see here is that if i recap whatever we have done here we actually know a lot of information by which form of the quadratic equation we are trying to um, solve or which quad which form is given to us so if i recap the quadratic function which is in the vertex form provides the most information because it produces all the information that we require for example so let us uh, expand this one a little bit and then and then see we can so here if i squeeze everything in we can see that a quadratic function which is in the vertex form um, i know whether it opens up or down i know the roots themselves with a little bit of an effort if we set this equal to 0, we'll be able to find that one. We know the sum of the roots. We know the product of the roots. We know that the discriminant is greater than 0 and it is, therefore it has two real roots. We know the y-intercept. We know the axis of symmetry. 
we also know the vertex form vertex itself and we can also find out the minimum or the maximum value because it opens up therefore k value tells me that the minimum it can have is minus 1 by 4 similarly we can fully plot the graphical function of the quadratic function we have been given which because we know four points in fact because the vertex the two roots and the y intercept make up the four points so we know a lot a lot of information similarly a factor form is the second most powerful form of the quadratic function because we are able to know whether it opens up or down we know the roots we know the sum and the product of the roots we know discriminant we know the y intercept easily we also know the axis symmetry but we don't know the vertex it's a vertex completely and not the minimum and maximum without actually doing some manipulations similarly the graphical form can also be plotted because we actually know three points of a parabola the y intercept and the two roots the least amount of information is available in the standard form which is this form which we have seen here so in summary um, this kind of comparison is very useful because you can say that standard form is a form in which if people give then you have to do a lot of manipulations to find out um, certain other information that is not readily available uh, the factor form is the second best option where you can you know a lot of information vertex form it definitely is the most powerful form because we get all the information that we need very quickly without having to do much calculations